Turbo, what do you have? What's in your mouth? Oh, that looks, that, I thought he had a toy. I thought this was a joke. It's okay, just a stick, it's just a stick. All good. Hey, what's up, gardener friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It is a beautiful day. Very toasty, but nice. The like real heat hasn't come into town quite yet. It's supposed to be a very warm and sticky week, so I'm not looking forward to that. But I'm gonna try and get a few things done over the next couple days before we push up into the upper 90s with that like 80% humidity. I don't wanna be doing anything outside when it's like that except for watering. We have to do a lot of watering. I've been in here working on the terrariums. They all needed some water and some fertilizer, that's why the lights are tilted. Can I help you? I'm not talking to you right now. Not everything's about you. Not everything's about you. What was that noise? I don't know what that was. Can you tell which one of these I've cleaned? And which one I haven't? This one. Just gave it a quick scrub. Have y'all tried this stuff? The Dawn Platinum. It is amazing. I used this a few weeks ago when I was cleaning the little, I don't know if you won't be able to see it from here. There's a coach light out there. It has the big white globes on it with bulbs in it. That's been broken for years. My brother-in-law came over, fixed it, and, uh, oh, oh, hold on, Get something else. See this beautiful clump of moss? Yeah, that was inside one of the fixtures here. It would probably make sense to show you what I'm talking about. So here's that light. It was busted for a few years, or thought it was busted, and all the screws were rotted out inside of there. So the globes, had to take them off to get it up and going, get everything fixed, took those off. My brother-in-law says to me, hey, Jeffrey, there's plants growing inside of these. Wasn't it beautiful? What a piece of art. Absolutely gorgeous. I thought that, that looked really neat. So that's where that moss came from. And the reason this ties into me talking about that Dawn spray stuff is because that's what I used to clean these. They were so disgusting. They were really grimy and sticky. And I you know, used a little bit of Windex and that kind of worked, some pledge, that kind of worked. So that's why I thought, hey. And I was getting tired of trying different things, so I went ahead and used that Dawn, threw them in the kitchen sink, and that was like everything just melted off beautifully. Love that stuff. Point there was that I uh, noticed that it dried without any spots, and I'm like, well, that's really nice. I mean, I know Windex and the other cleaning products are supposed to do that as well, but yeah they don't at least not with those glass terrariums the ones i have they i always have to keep wiping them down and rubbing water spots off of them it takes a long time to get those clean so i went ahead and used that to clean the top of that bell that i was just showing and it's just crystal clear absolutely beautiful dries without any spots way easier than using the windex somewhat easier turbo grabbed a hold of the honeysuckle vine and that happened so i need to i guess replace this I should do that anyways. Probably going to have to build something for this. But that's neither here nor there. I have other things I need to do. Where did the dollars go? I have been watering by watering. I mean, using the tripod waterer thing, moving around to all the different spots, and then did some hand watering before I started with all that. I'm trying to make sure everything gets a really nice, heavy, heavy drink today because, like I said, it's going to be really toasty this week. And the drip that's over here has decided to not work. So I need to replace that timer that's down there or perhaps maybe, I think what's going on with it, that's what I should talk about. That would make more sense. I think it's getting wet from the sprinklers. And you would think something made for outdoor use and water would be able to handle that, but well, that doesn't seem to be the case. So I was thinking that I should probably put it inside of something or put a box over it and lift it up on something so the water can't wick into it. And it has like little metal contacts in there that I think just need to be dried out and cleaned off. So I'm going to try that first before buying another timer. So those things are expensive, but there's there are a lot of plants that run off of that timer. This just isn't an ideal time with the heat that we're going to be having here to not have drip running. This is still out here because I have to clean out a spot in the garage for it. So still working on that. It'll, it'll get out of here soon enough. And the other reason I'm giving everything a really heavy drink right now is because I need to fertilize. It's gonna be in the mid to upper 90s. That's what they're saying for the week. And I don't really like to fertilize when the ground's that warm. It's good to make sure the soil's moist before giving the fertilizers and whatnot. These need another prune already. They're just growing like crazy. So yeah, that's what's going on. I could, I might actually hold off on the fertilizing till tomorrow morning just because 
I gave things maybe too heavy of a drink and it would be a waste of fertilizer. If I do it early enough in the morning, it should be fine. I'm not too worried about it. You gonna go for a swim? You gonna go do your swim Easter bow? Thinking about it? You're just having a... No, maybe not? All right, that's fine. You don't have to. Oh, and I need to work with this area. This is where I'm going to put the oleanders, which I need to get potted up. I'll probably do that tomorrow morning. This is where they'll go. I have some portable fence panels that are gonna go right here and then right here so that the dogs can't get in there and I can give those oleanders a spot where I can actually reach them. Right now they're in the driveway. And the hose doesn't reach the driveway. So I think they would be better off over here where I can run them to the drip or at least be able to access them with the hose. Where did Turbo go? He was right here. That's what made me think of this was that he was, where did he go? He's running around back there with Toby. I've been giving him a little bit more slack and some freedom because if you don't let him explore, then he's never really going to figure things out. And he hasn't been too bad. He hasn't been munching on the plants that much. He'll run by and like take a bite out of a leaf and keep going. But he's not like attacking things like I was worried that he would, but he's still young. There's still time for all that. Turbo, what you doing bud? How is this lens still foggy? It's been sitting out for like 35 minutes waiting for this thing to defog and it's still got a bore on it. What are you doing Turbo? Where'd you go? Come on baby. Don't know why those lights are on. Apparently the sensors didn't get the memo that it's daytime. They should turn off when the sun comes around the roof. So those are the fence panels. I was just talking about the oleanders. I did make a quick run to home deep. Okay, gonna give this a few more minutes. Hopefully that fog will go away. Okay, that's better. As I was saying, got up early, watered plants. I never did a transition from last night to today. So the last thing you saw was walk around over there and I just completely forgot to finish all the, those things off. It's the next day. Ran to Home Depot, got a little tote to put over the top of the timer, grabbed a new timer so that everything can stay watered and happy throughout the heat that we're about to have. And then I also got the succulent. Isn't this a neat succulent? There's a dog toy in the background. Excuse the dog toy. Isn't that a fun one? I don't know what it is. Some sort of crassula or sedum or something. I don't know. It's not labeled, it just says assorted succulent, which is something that always kind of grinds my gears a little bit when we can't label plants. But whatever the case, I thought it was really cool looking and uh, it, well, this, it was purely an impulse buy. That's all that was, but it was worth it. Like how neat it is. It, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, well, this is all stretched out and unhealthy. But then I looked around and I was standing in the full blazing sun. Like these were out on the pavement in the parking lot, just roasting in the sun. Although that maybe they were in a dark spot and then had just been moved out to the sun. So I don't, maybe it's not even supposed to look like this. I have no idea, but it looks like one of those succulents where they get the light on them and they color up and look neat and it just I don't know I had to have it that's all that that is it was just an impulse buy I went ahead and got the timer part set up the thing I do like about these orbit timers I'm not going to say that I love them because we're clearly having some troubles right but to set them this piece right here just this table's really slippery this piece pops right out of there and you can sit down and set it. You can take your time getting it set up as opposed to with the other ones where they're on the ground or laying by the spigot up against the side of the house and you have to be crouched over for a long time to get all the settings put together on them. So that is set up and ready to go. The downside to that though is that there's this open space in here and if water gets in here and gets between these contacts, well it's not good. I think that that's the problem with the timer that I currently have. It does have a warranty so I'll send back the other one. Got plumber's tape put around here just preemptively because I know I'm going to need it. These timers, they always have little leaks that come out of the sides. The only thing though, is that when I came out to set it up, the drip was running. So I'm kind of on the fence of, okay, do I just go ahead and cover that other one up so that it stays nice and dry since it appears to be working now? Or should I just go ahead and set this one up? I don't really know. Full disclosure, it's like 10 a.m. and I think it's already 92 degrees outside. It's not pleasant. I don't understand that. Usually, you know, you get up early enough and have a few hours to film, but I was looking at the hourly forecast and it's it's going to stay quite toasty. Even like tomorrow I could get up at six, but it's gonna be 80 degrees. I think the low tonight's 80 something, which is fine. 80 is fine, but that's, I can't film out here at 6 a.m. That's too much noise. The dog will be going crazy and whatever. So I don't know. I'm gonna do my best to get done whatever I can get done this week. 
with the very small amount of time I'll have to get things done without the camera overheating. Because the thing is the puppy, his like prime time, early morning, and that's when I need to be filming. And y'all have seen the barking. Oh, he barks, he just barks, and he barks, and he barks. I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this a shot at getting it set up. I don't know, the sun's over there in that corner. Maybe I'll wait until this evening since I know it already ran once. Let's have a look. Make sure everything's hydrated. Very careful stepping over this. Yeah, it's been running and I can hear it running right now too. The fourth zone on it is going down there in the bananas. I'm not gonna bother to swap that out right now. How are the pumpkins doing? This one's about ready to go, I think. Sounds nice and hollow. I had mentioned last week I was going to give these a few more days before I decided what to do with them. This one right here, the color on it, hasn't changed at all in the last three or four days, so I'd say that that's ready to go. I would normally think it needs to be a little bit of a deeper orange, but it's not coloring up anymore. Which means it should be good to go ahead and pick it. Right, once I get those, like, I think there's three to five of them on here. Once those are off, I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull these up because they're just pie pumpkins, just like the 99 cent pumpkins you can find pretty much anywhere. And these are, they're taking up a lot of space. <laughs> <laughs> they're kind of high maintenance as far as keeping them pruned. They're like a sweet potato vine. Every day or so I have to chop them and scoot them. And every time I scoot them, I risk bending the main stem and then potentially just destroying the entire vine and everything that's on it. So, you know, want to make the most of what's going on here and get the ones that are good pulled off. And we'll see if anything else develops from them. If they were going to be something more fun and colorful, I'd probably let them keep going. But this is... It's gotten really extreme. I think that it would be nice at this point to clear the patio out and be able to see a little bit better. And the other problem is that it's making it really hard to get back in here to do weeding and all of those things are difficult to walk. I don't like walking through them. They're all prickly and spiky and they kind of make my legs itch and my hands and my arms because, you know, it's a squash. That's what they do. They have all those little hairs and prickers up along the stems. They're not particularly painful. It's just irritating and annoying. So there's the end of that. And here are those fence panels that need to go up over into that toxic garden area. I'm gonna start getting these cut up here in a little bit. May wait until this evening or this morning though. All right, so here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm gonna go ahead and just do what I need to do, but use my phone. Because the issue is that this thing, it just overheats like crazy when it gets this hot outside. I absolutely, love this camera it's fantastic but with this larger lens on it it's like if it's over 85 to 86 i only get a few minutes of recording time out of it before it overheats so there's going to be a slight change in quality because i'm using my phone but i don't think the phone's going to overheat as quickly as long as i'm not in the sun and the audio is probably going to be kind of wonky so advanced apologies oh and when i have my frame rates matched between this and here it's, it's all zoomed in. There's no wide angle. I hate that. Why is there no wide angle? What's that about? When I've been looking at the hourly forecast, it's not looking like there's really going to be an ideal time to be able to get anything done out here with the camera at this point. I thought it wasn't supposed to get hot until like Tuesday morning, but I was wrong. Got my tiny sledgehammer here. Unpacked these fence panels. That was the thing I was like walking around. And I was like, well, what can I do with this heat? I really want to get those oleanders out of my driveway because it's just pavement, full sun. They cook over there and it's really hard to get the hose over there to keep them watered. So I'm going to go ahead and install these fence panels. Shouldn't be that difficult. And then I'll have a spot to put those oleanders. They need to be repotted too, but at the very least, I want to get them out of the sun. They came with all these little spikes that I assume they just, there were no directions for any of these, but I assume the spikes go down here like that. That doesn't seem super secure, but I guess if that's in the ground, then that should help hold that up. I don't know, that seems kind of flimsy. These parts right here go together, so this will lift up and push in there if I need to link them together. I'm hopeful that having two for each end is going to be big enough. I can't open this up all the way or else it'll fall over, but I don't know, hopefully that'll be the right distance. I don't know, we will see. Yeah. Well, now I just have to figure out how I'm going to get up here. The milkweed, they are seeding all over the place. Look at this. There's even some stuck down here on the bottom of this hibiscus leaf. Lots and lots of seeds. I'm going to go ahead and save those because why not? These things are pretty easy to start from seed. Okay, I have a cup here where I've been shaking those seeds off into for next year and the milkweed beetles 
or whatever those red things are. Those aren't milkweed beetles. What are these things called? I can't remember. Comment down below. Do you remember what these are called? I don't know, it escapes my memory, but they were all over those seeds, so I've been shaking the seeds off into there to give them a chance to evacuate and get out of there so I can get those dried up and put away. I just remembered that I don't have a mic on, so I have to pay attention to how close I'm holding this thing to my face, don't I? Ooh, that's a neat leaf. Look at that. That's cool. That is the uh, Colocasia mojito. Yeah. Not super crazy about that leaf. Actually, no, that looks pretty nice, but this one, that's me. Okay, now I just have to figure out how I'm going to get up there. I could go around up the steps and everything, but there's a lot of spider webs over there and I don't want to. I'd rather just climb the wall. That is almost a perfect fit. It's just a smidge too big, but I think I can just put it in at an angle like it sort of is right now, and that should do the trick. I haven't gotten the spikes in yet. I just set the one panel up, and then I have another right there, and I'm going to try and figure out how to get that to go from right here to over around this arborvitae, arborvitae, whatever you want to call it, it needs to go around that. I'm being eaten alive by mosquitoes, so I should probably stop talking, especially all slow and choppily and get this done. This would probably have been easier with a rubber mallet, but I think that's working. This thing's just sliding right off the top. Let's see if that's, oh no. Okay, all right, I'll fix it. There we go, That's, that kind of works. A little bit wonky because I still need to drive this one down into the ground, and pull this weed. I went ahead and put them in there and then set this on top so I'd know that they're in the right spots. Then have to hope that this one fits right next to it. Whew. Done. Fence panels are in. That was tricky because the ground isn't level between the different sides, so getting them all to go in and then to link together, it took a little while. But it's done, so now I have a safe zone, sort of. I still need to do a few things. There's nothing to keep them from just walking around right in here. So I need to figure something out there. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll probably just put like a big flower pot or something underneath the Lespedeza so they can't just walk through. I have some pots over here. This area is pretty dense. I don't see them coming through that direction anyways. But yeah, just this one side. need to handle that, and then I'll go ahead and pull the oleanders around and probably repot them. I don't know, it's really hot for a repotting. I would at least just like to get them to the shade and near this drip emitter here so that they can get some water. That's, I, yeah, I need to cool off. Okay, it's a couple hours later. It was starting to thunder and lightning, so I came inside. It was Turbo saying hi. You're always so polite. Make sure everybody knows that you're there, Turbo. Toby loves his little brother. That's what goes on here most of the day. Anyways, I finished up with those oleanders. I've been standing over here trying to get a shot of the hummingbirds feeding on these gingers because they're like always there. But as soon as I take my phone out, they fly away. I don't know if it's the like shiny metal or just bad timing. But I've been trying like all summer and those tiny little, oh, I can't say that word on YouTube. Cute little things. They just fly away so fast. I haven't been able to get it. Let's go look at those oleanders real quick before more storms roll in. Hey guys. Hey, babies, how you do Don't bite his face, that's not nice. It cooled off and off, oh, but we're still gonna fog up, huh? Yeah, cause it's extremely humid out here. Well, working in between the clouds. I don't know how it's gonna show through the foggy lens, but oh, there's still thunder and lightning. That's fun. At least it cooled things off a smidge. And now the oleanders are up here where they should be safe from the dogs. So the dogs should be safe from them. The little bitty ones need a repot, but it's so warm out. I don't know if that's going to be a good idea. I'm going to think on that one. I think that they're better sitting where they are. This spot just gets morning sun and it's right near a drip sprayer or a micro sprayer. And that's going to help keep them hydrated. Cause if, I could just wait like five days and I think they would be better off with that. Right? Probably. I'll keep an eye on them and figure it out. The air pressure. Air pressure just that, like did a thing. My ears started to pop. I don't like that. I wonder how long it'll take this to unfog when I come inside. <laughs> I guess it'd be the same amount of time, wouldn't it? Stop jumping up. That's not polite. I got this spray here to go on the furniture outside the cushions. Mainly it's a fabric spray. 
made by Rust-Oleum. It's supposed to work really well to repel the water off those cushions. Every year I used to scotch guard them with the scotch guard that's made for outdoor furniture, but I didn't do that last year because I had all that stuff going on. And then I gave them a light scotch guarding at the beginning of the year, but I was almost out and just never got around to buying more. So I thought I'd try this this year, but I was reading the warning stuff on here and I'm like, I don't know. I mean, look at this. May affect brain or nervous system causing dizziness, headache or nausea, causes nose, throat, and eye scare irritation. Reports have associated repeated and prolonged occupational overexposure to solvents with permanent brain and nervous system damage. Uh, I don't, I don't know about all that. That seems kind of risky. You just shake it up, spray it on and let it dry. Cause we just be really careful, wear a mask. No shortage of those laying around. I'm just debating if I should do it right now. The weather reports are all over the place. Like it's just lots and lots of little pop-up storms. I think it would be silly to waste the product when it's like this, but also really good timing if I can get it on there. The directions do make it seem very simple to use. Basically just spray it on, it needs to be over 50 degrees. And then it says humidity below 85. Well, that could be a problem. It's, it's extremely humid outside. I guess I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> I want to take him on a walk, but seems like a bad idea. Oh, speaking of stuff that came in the mail, I think it started to rain. So I just figured just stay inside and do one more thing. This stuff is supposed to be fantastic. I've watched other YouTube videos where people put their stuff in it and it just disintegrates the rust right off of it and it says it's safe. That's what made me think of this that last description I was reading, which is possibly what's on the back of like any type of spray paint. I have no idea with spray paint, you know, just noted like stay away, wear a mask, wear protection, be careful. That could have been totally normal for all I know, but with this stuff, it's like, it's really easy to use. You just pre-clean the item if it's oily, rinse it, completely immerse it, which I'm going to do in here and then wait one to 12 hours. Depending on the depth and age of rust, check progress periodically. Once rust is removed, rinse the item with water. How easy does that sound? We'll find some rusty stuff to stick inside here and see if it comes off. I want to know how all this stuff works. And the rusty things are outside. I'm going to leave y'all right here. Look at that. Nice container full of rusty things. Oh, I need to add the rice. No, 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 no. None of that's for you. Don't do that. So here I've got my pruners. What are these? Oh, these are the Felcos. You notice I don't use them that often. I haven't found them to be that much better than my cheap ones, just being honest there. But it's nice to be able to change the blade. Have a drill bit here that has a piece of plastic stuck in it. We're gonna try and get that out of there. Another diamond bit and then these, what are these things called? Channel locks? Is that what they're called? I can't even remember. Should probably try and get this piece of plastic out of there before I soak these, shouldn't I? Nope, that's where that lives now. That's there forever. Not really. So this piece right here comes apart from this piece, but they're all rusted together. So maybe after a soak, I'll be able to separate those and get them pulled apart, hopefully. What's in this stuff? Does it have a list of ingredients on it? Anything anywhere? I don't think so. It just says it's safe, simple, and effective, environmentally friendly, and economical. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm just going to fill this up and wait one to 12 hours. That's a pretty long time. I guess be checking back in on this in the morning. Hey, Turbo. Hey, <laughs> BB. Good boy, look how long that tail's getting. Your tail's getting so long. You sit, you sit. Turbo sit. Good boy. Just stay there for a minute. All right, you can come on. Come on with me. Good boy. This is a beautiful morning. Lots of running around and barking. And lots and lots and lots of time watering plants. That tripod thing I got to water the plants, such a time saver. I still have to hand water, but nowhere near as much. Anyways, but what I wanted to do, it has been 12 hours. I wanted to have a look at the stuff inside of here. I should probably like, grab a thing to set these on, shouldn't I? Put them on a plate with a paper towel. Let's see here. There might be some barking turbos in a mood this morning, a very hyper mood. Look at that. That had all kinds of rust on it. No more. I'm gonna leave these out and give them a rinse. The channel lock things, those had tons of rust on them. Look at that. Amazing. Just had to soak it. That was it. Nothing else. And then, 
Oh. Whoa. That's pretty mind-blowing. What I'm the most curious about is that other bit that had the piece of plastic in it because that one was by far the worst. Wow. Look at that. Probably should have put gloves on even though it says that I don't have to and that it's safe. So I just still need to give these a wipe down and that's going to help get some of the rest of the like rust sludge off of them. Give them a wipe off and rinse, but otherwise that was it. Just the soak. Now I just have to get them cleaned up and rinsed off. Well, there it is. Apparently two minutes is about as much as I can get done when I get this running around. Drip's running. Can't see it that well through the window, but there's a pretty solid stream coming out the bottom of this hanging basket. I'm also noticing as it's coming out that it's not coming out of the center. I don't know how well that's going to show up, but I think that what's happening is it's coming out of the emitter that's in there, which you can kind of see. So there's some like trickling action right above my finger and it's just going straight down and through the bottom, but the basket goes all the way over here. So looking at that, I'm thinking I should, well, I should do something about that, shouldn't I? Maybe I'll put that onto a drip line instead of an emitter like that because this isn't getting very even coverage. Not that, like, this isn't a beautiful basket or anything. To, ow, ow, what the hell, dude? Sorry about that, puppy just ran up and thought it'd be fun to grab onto my shorts and start tugging on him. He got a little bit of skin. Anyways, not very even coverage in here, which makes some sense because I had talked about how the alyssum that's on this side of the basket just hasn't been looking good and I wasn't really very impressed with it. That's probably why it's not getting enough moisture because this is potted up in a blend that I made really light and airy and I did that on purpose because remember the basket was so heavy that the spike or the whatever it was, the thing broke. Something broke. I don't remember what it was, but it was terrifying. I'm, oh, it was on a, a hook, like one of those S hooks and the hook broke. I had to redo the whole thing, had to partially fill with styrofoam packing peanuts and then use a very light potting mix, but a light potting mix doesn't retain moisture very well. So I'm kind of shocked that this has held on as well as it has. So as you consider, I was just looking at my temperature sensor that's sitting out there on the table and it says that it's 101 degrees right now. It's amazing how hot it gets outside when everything's surrounded by pavement because my phone says it's 94, but the thing on the table says, nope, stay inside. So I'm glad the drip's running. I ended up switching out the uh, timer because last night I was looking over at the Alexander Palm, standing here in the window and noticed that all of the Persian shield that's back there in the pot was just completely wilted down, looked awful, and I went out to flip it to manual. It's the nice thing about those timers, you can put them onto manual and just give different zones some extra time to run. Sometimes it's necessary, like when it's incredibly toasty outside, but nothing was happening, which was the problem I was having before. So I went ahead and swapped it out because like, why not? I have the other one and I have the warranty for the one that's there. And I put a box over it. So I'm glad to see that everything's running the way it's supposed to now. Hopefully there won't be any more wiltiness. And if there is, I can just push a couple buttons and get things watered in nicely. I swear, there was just a hummingbird there. They're everywhere out here. But as soon as I show up with the camera, they disappear. I have a GoPro. Do those have a remote control? I'm gonna look that up. If there's a remote for a GoPro, then that would be a smart thing to set up and then push the button. Anyways, I'm gonna wait for things to cool off a little bit more, if they're going to cool off some more and wanna pot up those succulents that I got from Home Depot. It's also, I don't, I don't think there's gonna be a Wednesday video. We'll know by now, by the time this video comes out, because this is a Saturday video, but it's just, it's too hot. Every time I go out there, the camera just overheats within minutes. It's just not working. Um, excuse you. That's, that's not for you, Turbo. Hey, 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 baby. No, 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 that's for the kitties. The pumpkin sleeping pad that was right there. I'm gonna have to do something else with that. I guess I can add it to the table with all the other things I've been trying to keep out of this way. The other night I was standing here doing dishes and heard a loud crash and a whole bunch of noise going on. I turned around and he had grabbed the rug out from underneath his, the water bowls and just took off with it. <laughs> He's a lot of fun. Look at that. There is remote control and it's on sale and it can be delivered today. Made sure to order that. Now what do you have? What is it? Oh, gross turbo. That would be a piece of a parrot toy he must have found underneath the birdcage. He has been really good 
about finding things underneath the sectional. <laughs> There's a sectional over here. Yeah, I know that we're supposed to move our furniture to clean it, but this one, it, like, it's two pieces that lock together, so it's really hard to move, so I don't clean underneath it. I get as far underneath it as the vacuum can go, but he's found all kinds of great things under there. Kongs and different balls and lots of good stuff. You're a good little cleaner, aren't you, Turbo? Yes, you are. Hi, Toby. Hey, baby. You want to come in? You can come in. Come on, Toby. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to about Turbo not coming. He's going to go wherever Toby goes. And I missed the first pumpkin harvest. It wasn't an intentional one. Do you see this? See all that? Yeah. Turbo picked this one. He snapped the vine and he was gnawing on this on the patio. So when I, and I made a cleaner cut on there and thought, okay, Turbo's first pumpkin. There it is. And now he's got a taste for the pumpkin vine. So it doesn't matter. Most of them are ready to pick anyways. I'm thinking that I'm going to plant pumpkins again next year. Can I like just get this over at an angle? There we go. That needs to vent some. Shouldn't be condensation on this in the middle of the day. It should be morning and night. That's it. It's a need to air it. Anyways, I was thinking that I will do pumpkins out here again next year, but I'm going to be specific about it instead of just letting seeds grow from rotten pumpkins that I throw outside to perhaps do some research, some investigating, and find some varieties that stay smaller. There are a lot of different types that don't necessarily form a 12 foot long vine to get the crops out. And I actually, I ordered a bunch of different types of Jack B. Littles, which are the teeny tiny itty bitty ones. They never came. I don't know what happened there. It's just, you know, the way the year's been with shipping. There have been a lot of things that just never showed up. So maybe I'll do something like that. I don't know. I think there's another one called like Cinnamon Girl, Cinnamon Princess, Cinnamon something that's also supposed to stay in a smaller vine. I have some squash seeds actually in here that are a 48 day squash that are supposed to be fine for cooler temperatures, for lower light levels, meaning I probably still have 48 days left. I could probably pop some seeds and see what would happen with them. It's a variety that stays smaller too. Like it's just sort of a bush and makes nice yellow summer squash, but I don't think I have a spot sunny enough, even though it says that they don't need as much sun. Let me see if I can find them. That was literally the first thing on top of the package. The summer squash sure thing hybrid. Bears fruit even in cool cloudy conditions in the absence of bees and males. Flowers produce a strong flavored medium sized zucchini that are long and very tasty harvest in about 48 days. That sounds fantastic. But this is also a very old pack of seeds it's from 2018. So what I was thinking though, is that if I am able to go ahead and harvest these pie pumpkins that are out there, the sugar pumpkins, and do that sometime this week, probably in a couple of days, I'm gonna keep an eye on them. I'm also a little bit concerned about the heat because that pavement gets really hot and they're on the pavement. But if I were to harvest those that I could probably pop some of these in place of them. Although I don't know if they're going to have the sun to get going though. Because angle of the sun's totally changed. The only full sun spot in the backyard now is basically that pot. <laughs> I'm not going to plant squash in there. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. You know how it goes when we start dreaming of seeds and all those things when it's too hot to actually be outside doing the yard work. We think about fun projects, right? All right well, I'll leave those out so I can remember that. And uh, I'm going to go online and read up on dwarf varieties of pumpkins. Not something I need to do right now, but it's not going to hurt. Ugh. <sighs> Finally, some rain. It has been bone dry, humid, but no rain. Some relief for the plants, the lightning. It's been very startling, it got turbo going. Look at you, you got your big boy bed. He's gotten so big, went ahead and took the divider out. You know, you keep the dividers in so that they feel more safe in a more confined area and they're less likely to poop or pee in the kennel if they have to sit in it. But He's big enough now. You got a full size bed. And now you're gonna take a nap, right, Turbo? It's nap time, please. <laughs> please, please, please. Acting like he's not tired. He's tired. For a very cranky puppy. Go back to sleep. In fact, I'm going to shut the lights off. Let's see if this guy will take a nap. Get some rest, Turbo. Come back later. Oh shoot, I left those boxes on the table out there. It's all right, they're under the umbrella. Hopefully they won't get too wet. Next day, still hot. That's just the way it's gonna be for a few more days. Not the end of the world. Plants are holding up pretty well. I'm staying on top of that watering and trying to get it done early in the morning so I'm not shocking the roots on 
anything. Caladiums are a little bit splayed out. I actually think I might need to do a flop, a flop, a switch. I have this bowl right here that has the gingers and caladiums in it. And then this rose over here that I don't think is getting quite enough sunlight. And uh, I thought this side got more sunlight, but I actually think it, there's more light over there. So I should probably pull that caladium and put it over here where the roses, move the rose over to that spot, and maybe even move that power warp on. I don't know. I'm so, I haven't done anything with these pots yet because, you know, it's just, it's too hot. I don't, I don't want to. The heat did start to wilt away at the pumpkins. There, you can see there's just a little chunk down there that's starting to come out. So I'd say it's time to go ahead and start cutting these things off of here. Um, excuse you. What are you doing? What are you doing? Get out of there, baby. Baby, come on. Turbo, come. Come on. Turbo, come. Get out of there. You're not supposed to be in the garden. You know better than that. That's a weird thing to say to a puppy that's only 12 and a half weeks old. He knows better, but you know, impulse control, not quite there yet. Uh, I had said I was, pardon the shadows. Can't really do anything about them. I was gonna give them about another week. And it's been a week. They're not really coloring up anymore. They sound somewhat hollow. I'll put my mic right here. See if can you hear that. Uh uh, turbo. No, get out of there. Hollow ish, I should say. Jeez, the sun is terrible. I'm trying to find a good angle. I don't think I'm going to. So I'm just gonna cut them as close as I can up to the stem. This one has a pretty big stem on. Yeah, that came off no problem though. Avoid picking them up by the stem too for as long as I can. I'm gonna set that right there. Make sure the puppy doesn't get to it. Dig around inside these spiky vines, see what else there is. I don't see anything left on this vine. So I'm gonna pull that up. I'll cut some more pumpkins first, get those out of the mix before I start doing any of that. There's a nice one. It's a cute little baby. Alright. Another one. I'm missing one. There was one in here that was right around here and i'm not seeing it would think that would notice it by now there's it was like a dark green one and every time i saw it i was wondering if it was perhaps a vine of some other type of pumpkin but i don't oh i see it there it is oh no that's just probably an immature pumpkin why is this one taking so much longer than the others to get going i hope i didn't tear the Bottom of that one's vine out. That's why I gotta make sure to check them really thoroughly before I start pulling away at them. Oops. Oh, hey, butterfly. Can we even see that? I can't see my viewfinder. Monarchs are moving through. They've been hanging out on the milkweeds, enjoying life. They seem to also very much enjoy these gingers. I don't blame them. Look at how great the gingers look this year. All right, easily distracted. Any more pumpkins in here? These still have lots of flowers on them and they still have time to produce some more pumpkins. But like I mentioned before, I'm kind of over having these all over the patio. They're starting to not look all that fantastic. I didn't even intentionally plant them or grow them. Yeah, I guess that's it. Just the three. That's okay. Oh, they're cute. <laughs> Just the three pumpkins. Well, it would have been four but Turbo picked one and chewed it up, and then you saw the other one. I'll go ahead and give that one vine another week. It doesn't look like I did cut it or pull it. I was looking at it over there, and it seems like everything's still connected. There are lots of tiny little, just like itty bitty little baby things starting to come up. I don't, I don't need it, it's not necessary. If it was a variety I'd planted intentionally, I'd go ahead and hold on to them. But this is all just a fun surprise, really. So I figure this is nice. I'm going to enjoy the three that are right here. It would have cost like three to four dollars to buy these at the store. So talk about a way to save some money. This one is, I'm almost positive, one of the sugar pie pumpkins. The other two, I'm not positive. They could all be sugar pie pumpkins. I don't really know. The only reason I'm fairly certain that this one is is because the vicinity of where that vine's growing is where I remember actually tossing the sugar pie pumpkins. Uh, the others, I, I have no idea. It doesn't matter. I'm only growing them because they're cute. That's it. I'm not going to be cooking with them. I will leave them outside for five to seven days. I may actually put them into the garage, typically with pumpkins 
I, what I used to do anyways, I would just cut them off the vine and then set them upright, which I don't even think is necessary, and just allow them to stay outside for like, I don't know, up to a week. And that would help to cure them. It would help get the stem to harden up and turn brown and let them finish doing whatever it is they need to do to become nice and sturdy and long lasting. Since I'm not going to be baking with these or anything like that, I'm not all that concerned about the curing process as they call it. They just, this is just decorative. It's just for fun. And I am in no way ready for fall. Not even close. You, if you're new to the channel, I have a love-hate relationship with fall. I kind of enjoy the weather. Where I live, it sort of goes from summer to just yuck. It's like there's maybe two or three weeks here in St. Louis where it's really pretty. And then it's just kind of gross. It's really dark, cloudy, rainy, and cold for a very long time. So I don't typically love fall. I like the transitional period, like the end of September into the middle of October. That's a nice few weeks there. And then after that, it's just blech. And I associate it with having to move all the plants inside. I don't like doing it. It's not hard moving them in. It only takes a few hours, but I would prefer to have them out here. But I have done a good amount of planting this year to help make the space more inviting for the winter time. Not that I'm gonna spend a ton of time sitting out here when it's like 15 degrees outside, but just something that'll be more aesthetically pleasing, like having those bamboos over there and, um, oh, well, okay, I guess that's it. I thought I had done more than that, that's it. There'll be a little bit more color out here this year than there usually is. But you know, I did the laurel hedge a few years ago and then the sable palms that are over there, which you can barely see, but once all those plants are gone, the bananas will die down, the impatience will be gone, the croton will be inside, be able to see those sable palms, those beautiful fan-shaped leaves, that'll be nice. And uh, you know, maybe fall will be better this year. I don't know. I do think they're cute though. I love pumpkins. There's just something fun, whimsical, and adorable about them. I did find a few varieties that I might try for next year that look like they may stay smaller. There's the Cinnamon Girl, which the description says it has a smaller vine on it. I'm pretty sure that I've grown that one before years ago up over on that hill. It was a really nice, big, round orange pumpkin that had a good flavor to it, too, for cooking. And then there was the Candy Corn, which are... a more size to these, a little bit smaller than these right here, and they have more of an elongated shape to them and slightly more on the yellow side, but they're supposed to have a smaller plant, smaller vine on them. And then there's one called Bushkin, which I don't know if I'll be able to find the seeds for it. They're sold out, but you know, I'll put in, see if they restock. And I'll keep looking for the varieties too. I only looked for a few minutes. That was it. I'm sure there are probably a lots of different types that will stay on a smaller vine. Though one, the candy corn, I think was a three by three or a five by five vine, which would, that would be a fairly decent, maybe not that much smaller than those actually. If I like look at each one of those vines, they're probably like eight feet, something like that. So wouldn't be a huge improvement. I could also put the pumpkins somewhere else. They don't have to go right off the garden bed onto the patio. There are other options. Uh, I don't really need to worry about that yet. I'll be working more on my seed orders here in, I don't know, maybe a month or two. I do already have like a small list going. I already did my bulb order like a month ago. I didn't order very much though, because the springs have just been so unpredictable that I just never really know what's going to happen with the bulbs. I went with mostly daffodils which should be okay to have around the puppy. Where is he? There is he. This time in this, or not this time, in the springtime, I would think, you know, daffodils are toxic. Not safe to have around the animals, but I would hope by spring he'll be out of the chewing phase. And if not, then I'll just dig him up. I won't let him get to him. So there's all that. Got some pumpkins picked. I'm holding off on pulling the vines over here until I, I'm gonna, I need to take Turbo inside for his afternoon nap. I don't want him to see me tearing the plants up over there. You know, monkey see, monkey do. Tucker, my dog that passed last December, he was always fantastic with the plants until he was outside with me one day when he was probably, I don't know, six months old maybe, saw me digging and do a bunch of planting. I went inside, came back out two minutes later and he had dug everything up. 
see that's what dogs do. They're pack animals. They see you doing something like, oh, okay, I, let me get on on that. That looks like fun. Let me dig some holes and tear some stuff up. So I would just prefer he not be around to observe me pulling up those vines. And I'm going to keep the one that has that mottled green one on it for a few more days, see if it colors up. And if not, I'll get rid of it. It is, I gotta go though. It's getting too hot to have the puppy out here. And I still gotta edit this video. So hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for hanging out. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. Should be cool enough in a couple of days to get some things planted. And I'll go ahead and handle those. I'm really looking forward to it. I miss it. I need to get my hands into some soil and plant some things. The urge has been there all week, but it's just, you know, bad idea when it's like up to 115 degrees when you're on this pavement. It's just, I think they just die. 118 is what this thing said yesterday. That's just the radiant temperature though. That's because I'm surrounded by pavement. It wasn't 118 degrees in St. Louis. It was just it's kind of like sitting on a parking lot in the sun. Not quite as hot because this is brown and not black, but it, it wasn't great. This is probably the hottest I've ever experienced in my life out here, but it's going to cool down. Hey, baby. He's so cute. He has been so good. Other than the barking. <coughs> oh, uh, does he know what that word means? All right, that's good to know. You pay attention to that. Other than that, he has just been a dream. And he's only 12 weeks old, so he's fantastic for a 12 week old puppy. Like my mind's actually kind of blown how great he's been. Other than the barking, there are ways to work with that, mainly to ignore it. And that's, that hasn't been fun. And also I think it's because it's been so hot. He hasn't been getting his mile long nearly mile long walk every day like he used to. It's just been going out to the pool on lots of training and trying to do enrichment to keep his mind occupied. But you know, when they get bored, they get sassy and you've been quite the sasshole. Yes, you have, but he's cute. You've been a very cute little sasshole. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. That's, that's so backlit, it doesn't matter. Bye bye.